Pensado's Place is brought to you by Vintage King, The Blackbird Academy, Avid, Isotope, Recording Connection, Studio 202, The Slate Companies, and Audio Technica. A discussion today about how to integrate your effects seamlessly. Our guest will show you how. Pensado Capital Jam is absolutely bananas. Details in a sec. Dave's got a new ITL. Yes. Fire up the jalopy. Throw that boy in gear. You're at the place. It's Pensado's place. Yay! What's up, everybody? Glad to have you with us today. It's a, a special day for me. Yeah. Kind of like a little bit of a homecoming, you know? It is. There's yeah. a sort of Tampa, Florida thing happening. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and St. Petersburg. Hell yeah, that's great. The other side of the bay. Well, I feel completely left out. The low rent side of the bay. No, I can't say that. <laughs> Edit. <laughs> nah, everybody knows I love them down there. Absolutely. So what's Good up, week? man? Um, you know, we got stuff going on, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty good. How about the picture I showed you earlier? Man. On the desk? Yeah. Kind of cool, right? Shall we get to Let's it? Let's do it. Okay, cool. Hey, family, great to see you. Let's trip down the audio lane for a little bit. We got some good stuff for you. Our support partners, you know them, Vintage King, the Blackbird Academy, Audio Technica, Isotope, Studio 202 DC, Avid, and of course, the Recording Connection. Please support them. They support you. Absolutely. Reminder real quickly, check out Blackbird for their upcoming classes. International students, this means you as well. A phenomenal education. Get to their site. Contact Karma. The big kahuna's coming up, guys. Pensado Capital Jam, April 18th, just a couple of weeks away at the gorgeous Howard Theater. Doors open at 11 a.m. Get your buns there. It feels to us like it's going to be an absolute monster, doesn't it? Oh, it doesn't feel it. It is. Yeah. Be a you know, it's interesting. You know that joke about I had to wear a pork chop around my neck to get the dogs to play with me? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, we have to keep putting on live events just so I can get my buddies to come see me and hang out with me, man. We're, we're so needy. Yeah. We'd throw events to go see well, people. My, maybe they don't like me or maybe this... Maybe we just got busy buddies. Uh oh, we're in the therapy. We're having a therapy moment. Aren't oh, we? an intervention. <laughs> That's right. I love it. I love it. I'll take. I'll take seeing uh, seeing the boys anyway and the ladies any well, way I can. At, well, let's talk about the folks that are coming. All right. Uh, the panel, absolutely sick. Michael Brower, Kook Harrell, DJ Ali, Gavin Lurson, Ann Mincielli, Young Guru, Noah Forty Shabib, Breathe. It's a lot of stuff. Think about it. From Coldplay to Kendrick Lamar, Alicia Keys to Bruno Mars, Rihanna to T-Boom Burnett, Drake to Miranda Lambert, Amazing Spider-Man 2 to 12 Years a Slave, Common to Jay-Z, anything you want to know, records, film, TV, the whole kit and caboodle. And you know it wouldn't be Pensadian if we didn't have gear for you, software for you, job opportunities for you. We're going to get some interns hired. We've got some trainers available to help you out. We're going to have some books you can reference. And you know we're going to have more surprises than that. Folks are coming from Europe and Canada and Costa Rica and all kinds of places. St. Petersburg. St. Petersburg yeah. even. And you know when you come from St. Pete, then you really got something happening. I come from the suburbs of St. Petersburg. Whoa. Whoa. The northern suburbs, about 50 miles away. Okay, guys, I feel left out now. Canadians, get there. Let's represent. Absolutely. Get on your moose. Get on your stuff. Head on down. I'll meet you personally. <laughs> also, ladies, get there in force. Oh, gotta have your ladies. point of view is really needed. We're, we really we like ladies there. Your perspective and your approach is really important to what we do in the audio community. Get there. Colleges and schools, represent. Don't, don't be wait. I've got colleges hitting me left and right. You better get there. Some great schools there. At, all in the whole area, all in the Eastern Seaboard, Midwest, come on, from Europe, every place. We want to meet you. We want to say hello. Here's how you do it. It's really simple. Go to pensadosplace.tv forward slash capital jam. Enter your email, where you're coming from, your school affiliation, if any, and you are absolutely good. Do not delay. Make it happen. There's one last thing. If you remember last week's episode, I had a little insert where I told you that Dave and I feel really compelled to help out folks who may not have anything, may have hurdles that are too big to get over, whatever reason, we don't care. It happened to us as well too. So we've created this Pensado Jump Starter Kits. 
These are portable recording studios that will immediately allow you to get past your challenges and to start your career. This is only for folks whose personal circumstances are too challenging. Again, do not feel bad about that. When Dave and I met, we were there. And so, damn it, let's try to give you a chance. Mm -hmm. It's coming. Dave and I are springing for this personally. Our sponsors are helping out. Kukarel's helping out. And I'm hearing from some other panelists some things that they may want to do, too. So this is a great opportunity. Now, in order to pick those folks, we're asking you to use the honor system. And you guys have two steps instead of one step. It's really simple. You submit a short paragraph to info at pensadosplace.tv. That's one of our email addresses. Nobody will see it, it's confidential. You describe your situation and describe your passion. Only Dave and I and our producer Will will see that, and that allows Dave and I to pick. Mm -hmm. Then, step two, go to pensadosplace.tv forward slash capital jam, and here's why. You have to be there to win. It is, and let me emphasize it again, you have to be there to win. We would love to be able to send them out all over the world, but Dave and I are going, we're doing what we can to make sure we give you a chance and we want you there to be able to do that. So do those two steps. First one, quick short paragraph to info at pensadosplace.tv, describe your passion, your situation, then enter at pensadosplace.tv forward slash capital jam and you're good. Is that good stuff, Dave? Man, you know, you came up with that idea, and I want you to get all the credit for it. I think that's, a, I think that's an incredible thing. I mean, you guys are getting more than, about 10 times more than what I started with. You no know question. what I'm saying? No question. And, and, uh, and that was like 10 years into my career, I probably, you know, mm -hmm. it, this is the real deal. It's, it's, it's an entry-level system, but you can, make a, you can make records as good as your talent. So mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think it's a wonderful thing. And I think some of the panelists may, you know, give a little review of your stuff. Let me, let me work all that out. Um, and the reason why you put up with those moments at the top of the show where we talk about sponsors is because it took me about seven seconds to call and ask, and without question, every one of them mm -hmm. said yes. So as much as that commerce part might be a little annoying as we get to this stuff, these are phenomenal people who step up every single time. Get to DC, we want to see you April 18th. Dave's sure. got a brand new ITL, what you got, man? We do. Yeah, what you as got? As always, I stumbled accidentally across something cool. Oh, what else? And um, it's about bass, I'm gonna share it with the guys. It's, it's um, we'll see it. Okay. I love cool. this one. Let's roll it. Hey guys, welcome. We are here at the Echo Bar with Eric Rikers. Eric, thank you for having us, man. Man, thanks for coming. So today we're going to share with you guys on how to create some samples, taking samples, and also how to utilize those in a session to make essentially your drum sounds sound more natural. So Eric, what do we got going on on the kit today? Um, basically, we've got um, SM57s on the snare, top and bottom, um, using a variety of different Lewitt mics on the rest of the kit. We've got some Lewitt condensers, small pencil condensers on the hi-hat and the ride. Awesome. And then um, we're using their uh, dual element uh, mic on the kick drum. Their 640. The Rec 640. Love and then thing. It's great. And then we're also using the, the condenser side of the Rec 640 on the floor tom. And then cool. we're using the, uh, the DTP 340 Rex on the rack tom. Awesome, awesome. And we also got some new mics today, right? From uh, the new 5040s from Audio Technica on yep. our overheads, which are absolutely incredible. Amazing. Yeah. And the, uh, the brand new N8s for our rooms, which is just phenomenal sound. Yep. The body that just adds to the room is yeah. incredible. I don't know. It? what Wes Dooley's doing over there, but yeah, those, those N8s sound incredible. Yeah, really, some really kind good. of magician. It's something thing. in that big top yeah. hat he wears, I think. Uh, it must yeah. be, it yeah. must be. Mm -hmm. All right, well, why don't we get right into it, man? Cool, man. Cool. Okay, cool. So now that we're done, uh, we've done getting our first recording 
one thing that I always like to do is to get samples of the drum kit that I just recorded. And that's going to be important for a technique that we're going to show you later. Cole, when you're ready, let's go ahead and grab a um, kick drum and a uh, snare drum and so forth. And let's get uh, at least uh, five or six different uh, velocities. Yep, let's do snare drum. Cool. Uh, do me a favor, turn the snares off on the snare drum, and let's do rack tom. Cool. And let's grab the floor tom. Cool. I think we got it. Now that you've recorded your samples, there's a couple of things you want to do to make sure that they are uh, prepared properly for use in your replacement program. So let's get into it. What I like to use, this is one of the most convenient tools um, that Pro Tools has had forever. It's the tab to transient button up here. And this will help you um, get your samples cut correctly so that you can export them. Um, you hit your tab key and you can zoom in and you can see your cursor comes right to the front of that waveform. And what's important to remember here is when you chop your samples, you want to make sure you get right to the front of that waveform. If you're all the way back here and you cut here, your um, drum replacement program will line up your sample here. And then you're going to have an, um, your sync is going to be off in your song. So it's it's real important that you trim these nice and close. Don't cut off the front of them, but get real close when you cut these, and um, it'll make your uh, replacement process go a lot smoother. So I like to use uh, Tab to Transient, and you can cut those. Command E, and as soon as you do that, you can zoom back out. And I like to capture a lot of the space at the end as well. You don't have to use it all, but I like to capture as much as I can. So I'll come up to the next sample, and I'll cut there. And now what you've got are these two samples. This is the kick, and I had two different elements on the kick. So first thing you want to do after you've made this cut, you want to come down to the end, and you just want to put a little tiny fade on the end. If you don't do that, you could end up with a, a click or a tick or a pop um, at the end of your sample. And I might even back the fade up just a little bit in front of this next transient here. And that way you'll be sure that it doesn't um, have that click. And let's, uh, let's just play that. Uh, let's solo this one and play it and just make sure that that um, plays cleanly. Obviously, that's plenty of space on the end of that kick. Uh, there's plenty of, of fade on this. But um, and then, but right before you export, if you export this file just like this, the fade isn't going to go with it. So you need to consolidate this file. And um, that's um, a really simple thing to do. You can, um, funny enough, I always do it by key, but I think it's, uh, I think it's Option Shift 3, which it is. 
So Option Shift 3 on the Mac will consolidate that now. Now it has that fade burned in. And as you export this now, which is Command Shift K, you can come up with your export selections and we'll choose Wave, we'll choose 24 bit, and we'll choose 48. And I'm going to go with mono because this is a mono track. We're not going to export it as stereo because it's not stereo, it's mono. Um, and you're going to keep it the same bit depth and sample rate that your original Pro Tools session is. Um, and then just choose a folder that you like um, so you know where you put your samples. I'm going to put them in here. I'm going to make a new folder. And I'm going to call it Drum Samples. And open. And export. And it's that simple. All right, so now that you've exported that sample, if you want to use um, some of the other sample, uh, some of the other microphones for that sample, um, you can easily um, scroll down and it'll, this selection will stay the same. So for your room mics, you'll note that there's going to be a little bit of a delay between the transient of where the actual close mic starts and where the room mic starts. This will keep it natural the way that you track the song. So this sample would have a little bit of a delay in front of the actual kick. Some guys like to shift their room mics. Um, your call, your choice. But this is an easy way to edit the sample with the exact same amount of selection that you had on the close mics. So same thing. You'd cut it, fade it, and then you'd export it the same way that we just did. So. Now that you've exported all of your samples and got all your different velocities and all the different microphone uh, choices made, um, next week we're going to show you how we use those samples to augment our drum recording um, but still keep things sounding natural. So uh, we'll see you next week. Hey guys, I've been looking forward to uh, sharing my experiences that I've had with Bob with you guys. Um, the man, uh, single-handedly change the way that uh, we approach guitar uh, and you'll, you'll you'll see how true that statement is a moment but uh, everybody uses his uh, his equipment uh, um, custom audio electronics uh, Eddie Van Halen Edge uh, Goo Goo Dolls Clapton John Mayer on and on and on if you're a guitar player you probably have used his equipment are using his equipment now anyway let's get right to it Bob Dave. Thanks for peddling on over here today. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Man. Appreciate it, man. So, um, I'm a big fan. In case they didn't know about all the little St. Petersburg things, we, <laughs> we grew up across the bay from each other. Indeed we did. Uh, and uh, uh, actually, I love St. Pete. Hey, man. Um, and by the way, guys, this isn't just a show for guitar players today. Bob is much more broad than that, and, and, and we're going to cover a lot of concepts that apply to a lot of different instruments, including keyboards. So, so stick around. I think you're going to enjoy this. Kind of ex explain to to our audience the archaic state of guitar pedals and using guitars and touring and studio musicians. Like we had to carry us one of those like old treasure chest pirates <laughs> <laughs> chests sure. around full of guitar Absolutely. pedals and yeah. two hundred little stubby guitar cables. And yep. by the time the sound came out of the amplifier, it. it uh, it was pretty horrible. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 take us back then. Well, way back when, when I first started out doing this stuff, there was all these, you know, was just different types of pedals, and there was very little rack mount gear at the time. You know, that was all sort of, um, sort of brand new. You know, so it was a lot of pedals, all kinds of weird stuff. A lot of them had lights. Some didn't. You know, LEDs to see if they were on or off. Mm -hmm. um, different shapes, different sizes. And I sensed a need. I saw people playing and bending down and, and tweaking stuff and tap dancing all over. And one of my biggest uh, inspirations was Buzzy Featon. And oh. Buzzy, I saw him playing in a club and seeing him tap dancing all over this crazy stuff. He had this monstrosity pedal board of all this stuff. <laughs> uh, a uh, echoplex on a mic stand, so he didn't have to bend down for that. He could move yeah. the slider, you know, yeah. because it had it up on a stand. Yeah. And um, I thought, God, there's got to be a better way. And, you know, all these, all the inner cabling and everything, you know, you know, never knew what's, when something went out, you didn't know where it went out. You know, you didn't have a way of isolating things easily. So I sensed a need for that. And um, I 
actually approached him, and I had done some stuff previous to that, but I approached him saying that I could help clean this up because I was in the process of developing a switching system so that you could plug your individual pedals in and have a f nice foot controller that had a nice you know, layout to it with an individual LED for each switch. And this is pre-MIDI, there was no presets or anything, it was just a switch and a light mm -hmm. for these things, and then get that stuff up off the ground. We're talking early 80s, early Yeah, early 80s. 80s, like 80, 81 is when I first yeah. started doing stuff for him. So um, that's how it started. Um, we got the stuff up off the ground so that you didn't have to bend over to mess with it. You had a nice palette to choose from on the ground. And then a little bit later, I developed a preset system for it where I thought, oh, instead of tap dancing all over this box, why not have a preset, which would preset a combination of those things. So that's why my boxes were always so big. They had individual switches first and then the presets. Mm -hmm. So, and there's still non-MIDI, there was no, uh, there was real basic memory, basic logic circuits and stuff that I developed for that. But it all just came down to sensing a need and seeing the struggles of a musician. And I'll never forget back when I was playing in, in, in less than well-known bands and carrying all the equipment myself, equipment myself, I, was, I remember like plugging everything in and then Sometimes I'd forget to check the polarity, so I'd reach down for my gray and green MXR flanger and echo, because I had to set the echo every song mm -hmm. by bending over, like you sure. said. But, but if I had, if I touched my guitar strings about half the time, it would knock me across the <laughs> stage when I touched that damn MXR. <laughs> I grew to hate it and fear it simultaneously. Sure. And uh, a lot of times, I think people came just to see me electrocuted, yeah. <laughs> which is part of the show. I hate getting shocked. But, oh my yeah, gosh! So, so fun. when he's talking about, by the way, some of you guys, when, when he talks about tap dancing, like we would have, we would we would take just a piece of wood and we'd, any way possible, we were poor, so we just glued the damn pedals uh, if they didn't, if you'd have to take them apart for a battery on the board, and so if you wanted this this effect, you'd hit this foot switch with your foot while you're playing, and then if you wanted that off, you had to tap that switch, then hit this one, and then you, 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 you we all had a wah wah pedal. Oh, I want to yeah. talk about your new wah wah oh, pedal. Yeah, yeah. We had a wah wah pedal. I brought was, you one. It was, it was, um, I can't say that I missed that because having pedals was like just, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it as a guitar player. It was it's just spices. wonderful. It's yeah. spices in a spice rack is what it boils yeah. down to. You know, crayons in a crayon box. Yeah. I used to call it, um, you know, uh, lures in a tackle box. Oh, wow. <laughs> now you're touching my heart. You know I love to fish. You need a lot of different lures. You want to catch a lot of different fish. True. I, I, remember, I remember you kind of pioneering the concept also of instead of carrying four different guitar rigs like this amp head, this amp, this amp, and, and um, you can't, I guess you came up with a concept if you didn't take credit for it anyway, nobody watches this show. <laughs> and, um, but you decided to, to, instead of duplicating all the power amp parts of those guitar heads, you would use one power amp, um, a Mesa Boogie maybe or something yes. like that, mm -hmm. but you, you'd, you'd have the, the tone on those amps usually predominantly comes from the preamp, uh -huh. so you had uh, with a friend, you 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 created preamps that would emulate a Marshall, emulate a, mm -hmm. a Fender, and all this. So so instead of carrying all of this gear now, you all these different pedals and all these wires, you simplified it even more. Is it a fair statement to say that you kind of yeah early pioneered on. how to yeah, use absolutely. that correctly? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, very much so. Um, early on, I was just taking because because after developing the switching, I would switch different amp heads. Um, load them um, by putting resistive loads. We didn't learn till later that a more reactive load was more like a speaker, but that's a mm -hmm. whole other story. So I would take actual amp heads and treat them as preamps. We'd pad the signal level down, mm -hmm. the speaker level signal down, and treat it just like if it was a, an effect. Mm -hmm. And so um, uh, over time, we realized that a reactive load was better. So then we start, started putting speakers in boxes that would be rumbling off in a corner this was before any reactive load mm -hmm. devices came mm -hmm. along. There's things out now that, that simulate yeah. that kind of stuff. Uh, but we were still taking heads. And what happened was I was touring with Steve Lukather and we were taking like a, we had a Marshall for a crunch sound, a Soldano for a lead sound, and a, a Mesa Boogie for a more clean Fender mm -hmm. sound. That's big, heavy weight 
to, mm-hmm. to, plus to backed tour up with, some yeah, into yeah. power amps. So I developed what we call the three plus tube preamp, where we took uh, those individual elements, all tube, and uh, and created uh, uh, basic simulations of those kind of sounds, where it was a three channel tube preamp with totally independent EQs on every channel, <coughs> and then a master overall active tube stage as well, because a lot of the power amps back then we were using were flat. They were just flat response power amps that, mm-hmm. that had really no life like you would want a tube amp power stage mm-hmm. to have. So we added extra EQ on there to give those things a little boost. Now, now subsequently later on, uh, guitar amp voiced power amps came along and then the preamp sounded more like a real guitar amp, right. you know, that way. So I'll never forget, um, I got a stage pass, and I'm not going to name names. And I, I, I would see, I would see acts on TV, and I'd go, "Well, where's the guitar amps? Where's the guitar amps?" Because they just show up at a big rack, and I'm, mm-hmm. and I'm, a, I'm, I'm like a diehard got to have my Marshall, you know. Sure. And I, I, I went backstage, and the Marshalls were all cut cardboard. Yeah, right. And they had <laughs> one of your rigs. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. Sure. I'm thinking, okay, oh, it's yeah. a different kind of world. That's um, funny. <laughs> Normally, um, like you've worked with the Edge, you've worked with some of the great session players, uh, Michael Thompson. Uh, what's the difference between uh, a studio rig and let's call it a, a small studio rig? Let's pretend like that might be a good home rig for somebody to emulate, and the, and then say the live rig. The live rig has to obviously be handled by people putting st- stuff on airplanes and road crews and stuff. Yeah, to a certain extent, but also those uh, studio rigs. Now, do you mean like session player type guys yeah, or guys yeah, who yeah, just like keep it at home? Yeah, like a medium level session player. That stuff gets beat up too. Uh-huh. You know, that's, that's really no difference um, to me. Um, I think a studio based rig would probably have to carry a wider variety of sounds. Typically a live rig, you're, you're reproducing previously recorded music most often you know oh, okay. so you need thought about that you need the the particular devices to get the sounds mm-hmm. that to reproduce the records that you're yeah. playing live uh-huh. but a studio guy thing uh, might be a wider palette mm-hmm. of of um of uh different choices for a wide variety of sounds because you never know what situation you're going to get into until you're there uh, not not one of the top guys kind of a mid-level studio guy how, how many different pedals would he have Oh, it 15 could, usually? Yeah, it could be there. any number of, of things like that, depending upon what you're called to do. I did systems years ago for a lot of TV guys. Like there was a guy uh, named Steve Carnelli, okay. who was a, um, a, a TV guy. You mean that, he, he played jingles or something? Yeah, and he did all kinds of, of those kind, that kind of work, which required a wide variety. Oh, and he did lots of cartoon stuff, too. So he had to get a lot of weird sounds and things. So he had a huge, big rack full of stuff. Whereas other guys, you know, mm-hmm. like Dean Parks, had a more refined mm-hmm. uh, set of, of um, tools to, to mm-hmm. get the sounds that the, he was required to get. You know, you'd hire him for mm-hmm. his thing that he does there's, so well. As a guitar player, there's some guitar players that that use the effects as part of their creativity and part of their sound, like say the Edge, mm-hmm. who we both respect. Yeah. And then there's some guitar players that, that that just don't put anything on the burger, just eat it with just a, a bun, you yeah, know, no the, mustard uh, ketchup. I think anything's valid. Yeah. yeah anything. um, uh, I know you have uh, limits in terms of what you can discuss with some of your clients, but someone like the Edge, um, if he were to buy a rig similar to what he has, what what would how would that be assembled? In other words, I don't want you to tell me about his rig because I mean, you might not want us to know. But well, no, it's it's the same in practically anybody's case. Number one, for a guy like him, he's got a huge discography. He likes to use the pieces that he used, mm-hmm. you know, when he created the sounds. So he has so, a, a more rack mount than pedals. Well, no, it's it's a fifty fifty thing. Oh, okay. You know, kind of. A um, little of both, but it's funny. You might have a lot of stuff, a lot of choices, but at any one time, there's only a couple, two or three things on at any given time. Okay. You know, it's not like there's a ton of things on. Uh-huh. It's, you know, you know, an echo, a distortion box or some, or some other form of coloration. But there's a wide variety of choices because of um, the um, set list, the song list. Wow. You know, and he likes to use the stuff that he used on the records. 
That's changing though now with with these more emulating type devices. He's deep like into profile yeah a fractal like world. He's into big time yeah. now. So the new rig that we just did has got you know four fractals in it. So wow, you know, and for using for different reasons. You know, they're all different choices. You know, and um, how do you? So, so let's say we've got a pedal board usually about this big or so, something like that. Yeah. I hate calling it a pedal board, uh, the, the board that selects what effect you want. Oh, foot controller. Yeah, foot controller. Mm -hmm. um, and then you've got all the, all the different knobs. Uh, and, then, and then you can also not just select individual preset, individual pieces of equipment, but you can also select combinations as a preset. Correct. And, and how, how is that organized? I mean, is it... Is it can you store those things on yes. a computer? Uh -huh. Take me through that process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, the latest boards that I have, it's called the RST foot controller, and it comes in various sizes depending upon how large your system is. Mm -hmm. So uh, in one end, there's uh, what would be called an RST-8, and there's eight switches along with programming switches like bank switches and other utility functions, but we mm -hmm. call it an 8. Mm -hmm. There's a 16, there's a 24. Wow. There's a 40. Edge uses a 40. No joke. Okay. Yeah. So there's, and all those 40 switches can be uh, used either as direct, what we call direct access controllers for individual, you know, loops mm -hmm. to control individual mm -hmm. effects or amps mm -hmm. or anything, and and or presets. So you can pre, you can have preset combinations of those things. So you can decide whether any of these 40 or say eight or 24 switches is a preset or direct access. You decide. You can you can set the board up however you want. And then you can store all that info on a computer. I'm you guessing. can. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's... There's a character display, and you can title everything. There's song modes, set lists that you can have. There's uh, 100 songs in a set, 10, 10 set lists. There's 200 banks of the presets. So that's a long show. That's a Grateful Dead show. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. <laughs> if you've got an RST40, you could have 200 banks of 40 presets. That's I know 8, you also 000. do a lot of engineering, and then uh, uh, as, as a studio engineer, and then well, not so much. More just the live stuff I used to do, and I don't do it as much as I used to, but I enjoyed doing it at the time. Um, what's the what's What's the cheapest guitar cable that I can buy that still sounds good? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know... Um, that might be a personal question, not sure. Well, I'm a big fan of, of Mogami cable. In, uh, fact, that's what I use. I, in fact, I don't think that it's terribly expensive compared to some stuff. But, you know, build an 8412, you know, 8410. Mm -hmm. That's good, basic yeah. meat and taters, you know, guitar yeah, that cable. Was, that and that's old stuff. That was the staple before Canary and all the yeah, others. Yeah, exactly. Came in. Yeah, 8410 and 8412. It didn't bend. I think you need to have pliers to bend it. <laughs> <laughs> Some of that stuff I used, man, it was crazy. But, but you know, there's a, there's a trend towards um, more expensive and, and high quality cabling. And um, I think I hear some, some differences in it, but sometimes you j guitars don't always benefit from quality. Sometimes a little orange vocal squeezer just shoved into your guitar is all you need. That's so Which, true. by the way, is like the cheapest compressor ever made. You're it's right. about that big around, what, big square, like. Yeah, yeah. And we still we still like the sound of it. My buddy Ed C still uses them. So guitars don't always benefit by quality because I don't know why, but. Well, I tell you, if, if you're dealing with a high impedance guitar, which you typically are, mm -hmm. high impedance guitar pickups, they uh, as soon as that signal leaves that guitar, it um, has to deal with the harsh outside world, and mm -hmm. that becomes the cable heading towards the first thing that's a higher impedance at the other end, and that could be an amp, or it could be your pedal board, mm -hmm. or it could be any number of things. Therefore, a cable, the higher quality cable you can use, mm -hmm. a cable becomes a tone control. A ca varying different yeah. types of cable yeah. is really a filter. It's a passive mm -hmm. filter, um, and depending upon length, depending upon capacitance per foot, um, and depending upon what that, the guitar, the load that guitar sees um, on its, in its journey from, you know, guitar to amp, it's a harsh world. Do you have any advice and, and possibly some sort of intervention help for someone that just is addicted to guitar pedals? 
Uh, it seems like they've kind of made a resurgence here lately. Big I go to time. I go to Vintage King and I see every every month I see 20 new ones that I want. It's the most exciting time right now to be um, uh, into you know guitar stuff like that. The cool mm. thing about it is. You know, back when I started, it was still pedals at first, mm -hmm. and then the rack thing kind of mm -hmm. blossomed. And, and being here and being in Los Angeles, I got brought um, pieces of studio gear because mm -hmm. I was doing stuff for studio guys. Mm -hmm. And I had to learn to interface studio gear with pedals mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. And that's where it really, you know, started off. Now there's a resurgence towards everything pedal. There's pedal very are few. Way great quality. Oh now. my God. Nowadays, stuff is amazing. And um, MIDI controlled pedals, um, they're all different types. But there's any guy that knows the hot end of a soldering iron out there is building pedals. And it's, a gr it's great, really. It's a great time because there's really so many is. choices. Yeah. And the, the instant gratification that you get from a pedal, you know, it's a relatively. Um, uh, low cost way to get in the game, yeah. you know, because there's such a wide variety yeah. of different price ranges and quality. It's yeah. what you got to watch out it's for that, though. By the know? way, there's this one pedal. I think it's a CAE Dunlop. <laughs> 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 Tell me about that one. Well, there's several of those actually, and and, the, and they're kind of utility things, you know. Mm -hmm. Ones are called well, a boost. On. You know, you, you, we, we're too inside. <laughs> He's come out with a with a with a his take on the classic wah wah pedal, and it's pretty spectacular. And we're, we're going to talk about some MXR stuff he's come out with too, but describe the wah-wah pedal because you've got that little button on the side. The wah pedal came out um, be because for years we were um, modifying wahs because, again, it's a high impedance circuit. Mm -hmm. That's the type of thing that is out front has to be at stage position, okay? Usually back then racks were way in the back somewhere, so mm -hmm. then you've got to run a long cable length and sometimes the wah would suffer mm -hmm. from, from that cable length mm -hmm. because it's a high impedance circuit. Mm -hmm. Well, there were all these different um, modifications that I would do to uh, WAS to put in true bypass switches, add a little buffer to drive the line back to the amps, um, any number of uh, uh, little tonal shifts and things we might do to, to um, tweak it for people. So we came up, developed this uh, CAE WAS with Dunlop, and uh, it incorporates all of those features. It's got a built-in uh, boost line driver, the same as the 401 pedal, it's the exact same circuit that we mm -hmm. have. Um, two different inductors that you can switch between for different tonal options. Oh, wow. Um, uh, and there's some tweakability inside if you want to go even further. There's a few trim the, pots. The little that you can vertical mess with. gear, I can take it off the round gear and, and, and have, can, have my wah start and You end can do it. that okay. if you wanted to. It's still got a treadle. Uh, a, a, what do you a call tooth, it? Uh, that's treadle? A, the treadle is the, is the, you know, the yeah. part you put your foot on. But okay. then the, um, the, um, the, the gear, gear yeah. you know, that, that does it. Yeah, you can, you can change the I used to park so mine near the, near the, the low end of the frequency spectrum and use it for like a, a an EQ pedal sure, as absolutely. opposed to a doing, okay. doing your old Michael Schenker thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh man, you just hit one of my favorites. I forgot you worked with Schenker too. You did I, at one point, you know? After, after I got a couple of Michael Schenker yeah. questions, man. Um, Lights out in London. Ooh, yeah, right. That double live album is yeah. amazing. <laughs> so, this is a selfish question. <sighs> Virtual guitar amps in 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 the DAWs um, plugins, let's say, are starting to get pretty good. Some mm -hmm. of them are actually real good. But the neat thing about all of them is that they're different. Right. And so sometimes different can be good. Um, would there ever be a situation where you would see a need to create a pedal board? Because I use a lot of pedals when I mix. Sometimes I'll use five or six, mm -hmm. and there's impedance problems. Mm -hmm. The opposite direction. You know, I got a yeah. high impedance input going into a 600 ohm thing. Right. Um, it, it, do you ever see a time where you might create something that, that a guy like me and a guy at home could, could take those virtual guitar amps and, and, and your system and, and not have to buy 500 reamp situations and, and $2,000 worth of impedance matching stuff to get those, yeah. to, get those um, to sound good? It seems like that would be a place of growth. And then, then keyboard players, what's up with you guys? You guys 
all want to be guitar players because we get all the chicks. <laughs> Why aren't you buying pedal boards from him? Uh, 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 do you have an they answer keep for it that? All, they, they, they keep it all in racks. I don't know. I mean, But I guess two synthesizers now come with some pretty good built-in effects yeah. already. So I think my whole thing was uh, I was taking, it, it's sort of like a switchable patch bay in a sense. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you have loops that, that you, you plug pedals into and stuff. And it's a, mm -hmm. the guitar players are more... Um, oriented to that kind of thing, you know, mm -hmm. synths, I guess, you know, synth guys, you'd have different modules and stuff for different sounds, but they usually mount it into to mixers mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But they and could, and they, they had MIDI, so they could do switching, in. I guess. I mean, yeah. it could be, I, it would never really, it never really blossomed into that so much, you know. I, I just, I just, I would just, I would just have one just to, to, to see like a painting on the wall. You know, I, I was sort of, I got approached a few times back when I started, people saw, you know, what I was doing for guitar players. And some guys, I remember some guys like, I, I talked to, you know, Robbie Buchanan? Yeah. Yeah, I talked to Robbie years ago about that. Robbie. Yeah, Monster. about doing something. And um, I did so, some little things for Rhett Lawrence, I think, mm -hmm. one time, you know. But, I learned but, Pro Tools from Rhett. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I don't know. It's just, I guess I was considered the guitar guy or something, you know. So. Yeah, I, 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 I understand that. <laughs> um, we were talking earlier outside about um, Craig Adderton and... Um, My hero, man. He's yeah, the guy me that too. got me started. Uh, uh, the, one of the one of the first circuits I ever built because I didn't have any money when I first started, so I was making a lot of my own gear. And the, one of the first circuits I ever built was a gate that he had. I think it was an REP or it might have been mix or. It was you sure, his, it was probably a guitar player. Guitar player. That's yeah, what it no, was. Because that's where I got a lot of my stuff. A little back FET then. with mm -hmm. one FET and, and how to make it a gate. And I, I built um, I built a four unit gate with that. Sure. And, and yeah. it really, it, it, I didn't have quite the exact components I needed, but I got close. Yeah. <laughs> and it, 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 it wasn't his design, so I'm not casting aspersions on him, but it turned out that, that when it opened up with a kick drum, it just added the coolest attack to yeah. a kick drum. <laughs> and of course, Perfect. And of course I, I, I showed it to the world as my kick drum yeah. enhancer, uh -huh. and not my gate. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> but, That's uh, great. No, he's my hero, man. I think all of us in that game I'd owe, love to owe, meet him. Owe, I've never met him. I met him at, at NAMM. He came to a booth when I was doing a, a NAMM booth thing one time. I just bowed down to that guy, man. Yeah, just, he same, laughed, yeah. you know, it was just yeah. super cool. Really good uh, educator, super smart guy. But I collected all of those Guitar Player Magazine articles in the back. And that's yeah. where he, he gave me the impetus for the switching system thing. Oh, wow. He totally did. He had a series of three articles, consecutive articles in Guitar Player Magazine. And I took that concept and ran with it. So you know, um, I didn't invent it. I might have pioneered some things. I didn't invent well, it. Steve but. Jobs style, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and... and What's the, what's the current state of wireless? I mean, uh, 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 we've got pretty good now, right? There's no interference yeah. and you don't start transmitting a police Yeah, uh, it's, yeah that's better. It's with the, the whole digital transmission thing. I think it's made things better, but I just consider it showbiz. I mean, it's a necessary evil. And um, I try to implement, when I, uh, implementing wireless systems, you know, I always mm -hmm. make sure I have a cable override Mm -hmm. You know, and oftentimes I'll transform or isolate the output so that the the, the effects and things make uh, try to trick them into thinking they're seeing a guitar pickup. How do you have a cable override without having a cable in the guitar? No, that's if you you, you got a coil up cable next to your rig, and if you're wireless and you and you hear oh, taxi you cabs come in, go grab, you grab that, and you pull uh, jack in, and you override that wireless. Yeah. Um, our friend Brent Paschke, have you spoken to him lately? Yeah, in fact, <laughs> absolutely. We, we have just gone through the, the craziest um, battle with wireless. Wow. He's going nuts with it lately. It's I was like... feeling that subconsciously. <laughs> By the way, uh, Brent's been on the show, and um, <laughs> he's, he's, he's most known probably for being Pharrell's guitar player, particularly in the NERD project with yep. Pharrell a lot. Great guy, monster guitar player. Yep. What, what kind of rig is he using? Now um, we just built him a new uh, pedal board based system and we built in, um, he's gonna start just traveling with the Kempers. So he'll use a Kemper, Kemper modeling amp 
but I developed a switching system for him so where you can AB between two Kempers and switch the outputs between front of house and, um, and monitors. There's two separate lines that, that feed and you can flip a switch and go as a backup from one to the other and integrate his pedal board in as well. So. Where's all this going, man? I mean, where is this thing gonna end? It's everything is getting smaller and it has to get smaller and lighter. And um, that's why most of the stuff that I'm doing these days are pedal board based systems. Now it might be one or more boards, you know, I, and, and it's so pedal oriented, mm -hmm. it's not rack mount anymore. It's, that's, not, uh, that's unusual. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's I, the way I feel is like, why rack mount a bunch of pedals if there's no other rack mounted pieces involved in the system? Pedals go on a board, mm -hmm. they travel better in a suitcase type enclosure. Typical racks these days have um, uh, sliding drawers, you know, to put the pedals on and such, mm -hmm. but they get damaged easy. They mm -hmm. get beat up. And if you have a small, and it's small and light. So the smaller you have to make it, the lighter it can be thrown. It can be, it can be thrown in, in, you know, baggage claims. I'm talking about touring musicians and mm -hmm. such, you know, that don't have the luxury of things, you know. In any case, it doesn't matter. It's always that way. The latest, um, the U2 system, the Edge one I just did, instead of using these slide out trays, we built channels in the rack and, and the, the wood uh, slaves, uh, the, the wood uh, uh, trays ride on wood channels. Oh, okay. There's no metal involved or anything, so it's mm -hmm. really s secure and solid. No um, less moving parts. Does a particular project come to mind that was um, rather large in scope and massive and, and tested your skill limits, or, or, or well, are they all the, kind of like that? I, 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 the latest one I've done is the coolest one I've done. You know what I mean? That's the way it is mixing. Yeah, My right? favorite song is the one I'm working exactly. on. Exactly, yeah. And, and currently, that's um, the way it's been with me. You know, the, the edge thing that I just did, I keep bring, coming back to that because it is a large in scope. Um, it's simple in concept, though. It's just mono. It's a mono rig. Mm -hmm. 32 mono loops in series wow. out to eight different amp choices. Wow. Yeah, and then you can split off the signal path, you know, to 32 loops. Boop, 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 all the way down That's the line. amazing. You know, um, it's pretty simple. This might not seem obvious, but I'm sure a lot of people want to know this, but, um, but do you have to create a separate pedal board for a left-footed person as opposed to a right-footed <laughs> person? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, it's funny. It's thrown me because I do have a client who's left-footed that way. And, and I thought when, it was when being I, funny. That's I, true. It, it, well, it threw me. It <laughs> totally did because I'm thinking, I'm used to going this way, you know, and now I'm having to go this way. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. So how many left-footed pedal boards oh, have you made? man, just one. A, a real a, a, a good uh, friend and client of mine, Benny Bilgeri in, in oh. Austria. Wow. And his was on the on the... On the you know, uh -huh. the left side. I'm like, whoa, wait. No, I'm th I think cable goes this way, not this way. You know what I mean? I, you're standing there. It's, it, it's so bizarre. Cause he, and then he's playing like this, right? So his cable comes out and goes that way. I played with a great guitar player who, who <laughs> played his wah-wah backwards. So the big part of the wah-wah was, yeah, and, and, and I couldn't touch him. He was amazing with that <laughs> wah-wah pedal. Wow. I guess he just learned that way or something. He just crammed his heel down yeah. to bypass it, right? Well, you know what, my friend? Yeah. Uh, we're talking about left feet and backward wah-wahs. Maybe that's a sign from, that's uh, funny. from the old Les Paul himself that we should shut this thing down. All right. Is, have I forgotten anything? Is there oh, something you want to tie it up with? Oh, no, we, 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 uh, we could sit here for days, man. I know, I know. <laughs> but thank you so much. I know you're, you're busy and... Uh, and then you, you rode your little electric bicycle I out did. here from, uh, all the way from Florida. I appreciate yeah, that. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, man. It was good. Okay. Thank you so much. Hey, guys. Um, uh, a lot of information today. Uh, a little bit guitar-centric, but uh, a lot of musical ideas, a lot of concepts that I think apply to more things than just guitar. Although I can't imagine what those things would be because guitars are the greatest things ever invented in terms of instruments. Um, Thanks for hanging with us, and we'll see you next time.